Hello there. I'm going to show you a nice user-friendly HTTP client I learned about from Daniel. Daniel is a member of the Nox team and he was on a TKYT session. I'm going to link to that somewhere. And he used this CLI to make an HTTP request. And I was like, whoa, that's beautiful. What is it? And he showed me what it is. And I'm going to show you what it is and if you could start using it today so if i could share my screen so over here the cli tool is called http yes it's an http client it has a web and desktop app, but i already have postman for that but what interested me was the terminal usage and how user friendly it was all right so you could see here that um, HTTP is a command line HTTP client. Its goal is to make CLI interaction with web services as human friendly as possible. And yeah, I, I think it, it was doing that. So to install it, if you're on a Mac, you could do homebrew, brew install HTTP. Um, if you're on Windows, you could use Chocolaty, Choco install. And if you're Linux, you could use Linux brew or snap, install it using snap. So I already have it installed and uh, let's just dive into it. So over here in WAP, um, I have a, a little web service open called the conference API. So it's an API we're working over at the Salesforce community. And um, yeah, so before now, if I wanted to do something like this, I'll reach for call. So let's do this with call. So call comes with most... Uh, systems i think so if we do this we'll call we get the data i just want to see show you the before and after like if you've been using call and you want to move to http that's like a major step up so let's use it so i already have http pi http installed and if i do http version and so once i install this with brew install http it installs two cli commands http and https for making requests with https okay so now if i do now, uh, now i'm going to do the call so you could see the before and after we call then i'll do http now i want to make a guest request now how good this is is it 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 doesn't even need you to specify what request you need to make just like call so it's it's, it's doing the same conversion as call but watch the output we get color encoding folks like how cool is this that so it's good for your developer eyes but you you must agree that this is way better than this one all right so you could see we have the request header so it response header right so this is really good at a glance you so if you wish out for the tool like postman before to see this information you don't have to know more and you if you want to see this information we call of course you can but the flags are not the most memorable, at least for me. That's why I shy from using call most of the time and just reach out for Postman or maybe like the treble test because, because in the treble app, uh, desktop app, there's a test section where we could test APIs and get to see those information as well. But with this, I could maintain a complete command line workflow and still use human friendly info. And check this out. Because I'm on localhost, HTTP knows and gives me a shortcut and the shortcut is just colon so if i do http and do colon 1337 it's the same thing it's going to expand as the local host and this local host we, we, we passed before it's also going to expand to like http like so with the scheme so you don't have to specify the scheme like ever all right so we could now do 137 like so and we get our information how cool is that let's look at something else that is cool so now with the conference api is still work in progress we don't have post methods yet or post routes so let's use the um the http route so we could do http so like so we could do pi.dev all right so it, they do have this and let's do a get request now if i do this I get the information from the pie there. So it's just like a playground service that they expose for us to like do things like this. So you get to see all this information and all that. So you could say, yeah, Kelvin, that's all good and all, but how about sending payloads? Okay, I got you. You could do that. And one thing I like about HTTP, it doesn't have any strong convention or rules about which type of method gets a payload. 
So if even with get request, I could specify a JSON payload and it will realize it's a JSON. So by default, to do that with this one, I could do um hello equals to world. So when H by C is going to serialize this adjacent and send that over. And you could see okay, yeah, method is not allowed for the request URL. Yeah, so for this route, it doesn't allow that. So let's look for the one that do that. So yeah. So if we do post, let's do for post. Right? I think it's supposed to post route. Yeah, and we get to see that this was in the post route, and yeah, so it's cool. So I, so now one thing we could do is, what if you want to see how HTTP HTTP is sending the request body? Okay, we could do that with specifying dash v like so. All right, so when we do this now, we get to see the requests information, the headers, right? And the body now you notice that we didn't even have to specify that this is a post request because once HTTP sees a body it's going to default to post and that was why that failed before because the get was switched to post you get it so that was a get route because of this service so when we specified body then it was switched to a post request by default but we could we could do so to to make sure that's claim so we could say okay this is a get request so no switch of body and we could see that also went right so that just proved my point that it doesn't care what you're sending it just takes the, the info and you could specify the payload for anything but of course this is a get route so it's not going to really show that all right so we could do delete so this is delete endpoints i think this uh service we're using also is supposed to delete endpoints so we could hit that route and you could see yeah it's 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 gone so we do so this shows you everything so yeah so one more thing is you see how we specify the json payload we could also specify query params almost similarly so if you have like endpoints that you know maybe like filtering that you have to specify a lot of query params in this will be a lifesaver because you could do something like this http uh, let's do pi dot dev do the get route and instead of doing uh this like so and the uh, stuff and you have to serialize for your cli because it, it might not understand it properly you could do name double equal to will tell http that this is a query param and we could specify more than one like just as much as you need so let's say um um let's say filter um I don't know. Let's filter. I don't know. Just make us stop. So we're filled out by email. Of course, there's no email, but when we run this now, we could. Uh, okay, let's see. Method not allow. Uh, okay, yes. Yeah, my bad. Double equal to. Remember. Mm -hmm. And you could see now that. Um. Let's let's um check. Let's add the dash v. Okay. No need for that. So if it's in the URL, which was nicely returned by this endpoint. We see that the value was we passed, we attacked as query parameters. How cool is that? And we could also see that if we do dash v, like so, we could see this is it. So this this was what was sent. So if you have like this will be a lifesaver if you need to like specify a lot of query parameters for endpoints. This will be your go-to. One more thing, like you could also say, um, don't make this requests just show me the shape of the data you would send by using the dash dash offline flag so if i do this now and if i do offline like so it's not going to it's, it's just going to show me what will be sent but it won't make that request so this is it so you show me yep this is what i would have done but it won't make that request so if i'm doing this for like um um let's say a post request I do post and we could do let me just put a post body and say um, email um and let's just say example at example.com and if we do this now we could see it did not make the request but it shows you the shape of the data that would have been set sent if it actually made the request so like i said you could do put post bash and you could see how convenient and how it reads and lastly how do you set headers cool all right i know we call i think with dash h flag and you know 
I, I just think Call is the best CLI tool out there. It's really good for what it does because it has a whole bunch of use cases. It covers not just making HTTP requests, you could do sockets and stuff, but this is the way to go. I feel if you're doing any form of API testing as a backend developer if, or a front end developer and you like a terminal driven workflow. All right, so let's do, how do we send headers? To send headers, all you have to do, so note the conventions to send JSON payload the equal to, to send headers, um, to send query parameters is double equal to. For headers, what's going to be? Huh? No, not triple equal to, not that one, but this one. So to send headers, so let's say we have um, X community. You know, when you are setting our custom headers, you know, standards, they use X prefix it. So we're going to do that. Sales cast, for example. Now, I won't do the offline. I'll let it go through. And I will do the dash V so I see the headers that were sent, right? So now, and since it's the post, let's just give it a buddy. So name, name, Kelvin, all right? Now, when we do that and we check this header, uh, let me see. Oh, yeah. My bad. I was wrong. So sorry. So yeah. So what was what we're supposed to do here is not equal to, but colon. All right. Colon will set the header. Equal to is to make it like a JSON, which is what we saw here. All right. So good. So when we do this now, we get to see the here in the header, we get to see it here. So X community, we get to see that that's the value we get. Okay. All right. So that's so cool. So also you could send a form of Note we've been setting JSON. That's why you could see our content type is application JSON. So we could send a form by doing HTTP and um, dash F. Okay. And I'm going to do dash V so that we can see the content type. And if I do pi.dev, dot dev, then post. And so now the form will now be, so the form data, let's say Kelvin, for example. And uh, if I run this now, sorry, if I run this now, you get to see the content type is form URL encoded. So this is like form. So you're simulating sending like a form. So that's what we're saying. And you see with JSON is not, but the form it has this value. So yeah, so that's that's it for this nice little tool. Let me know what you think if you're going to use it and what you think about the user friendly nature of the commands and how it reads. How could you just like send headers with colons and JSON with equal to or form also with equal to but with the dash f flag and also query parameters like that one is it for me and also the short the shorthand for localhost because as developers we're almost always on localhost so instead of typing localhost all the time just put a colon your port and I forgot to mention if you didn't set a port it's going to default to 80. I, we don't normally use 80 but probably some services still use 80 but is it's just good for you to know so you must also you must always specify the port or it's going to default to 80. so that's it for this short quick video let me know what you think in the comments below of this tool i will be using it and yeah also do not forget to subscribe and like this video if you like it it really helps the channel to reach more people so yeah i'm gonna be super grateful if you do that so like and subscribe all so that's it. See you on the next one.